this video, we're going to take a look at MinUI for the Ambernic RG35XX. We'll cover why it's a great custom firmware option, how to install it, and a look at a few of the settings under the hood. Let's dive in. As the name suggests, what makes MinUI really stand out is its minimalist design. It's lightweight, very clean, and incredibly responsive. Now currently it only emulates about 13 consoles, but as you can see it includes most of the heavy hitters from the 80s and 90s. So you're likely wondering how MinUI compares to Garlic OS. Now obviously Garlic OS will emulate a lot more systems, but beyond that I found the performance in game to be very similar, both perform great. And it's difficult to make a comparison between the two because I feel they're trying to accomplish different goals and both OS's achieve them quite well. For instance, I really enjoy Garlic OS for the number of consoles it can emulate, but also for how customizable it is. It's really cool to be able to swap out themes or add your own game artwork, and it really has that wow factor when showing off the 35XX to friends. However, if I'm leaning more towards a personal gaming session where I just want to be able to focus on playing some of my favorite games without distraction, in that instance I lean more toward MinUI. So as I said, they're both really good at what they are trying to accomplish. And for that reason I can't really recommend one over the other. I would suggest that you try them both and see which one you prefer. If you're ready to give MinUI a try, let's jump into the installation. I recommend that you install it on a separate SD card from your current firmware. I feel like this is always a good idea. That way if you find that MinUI is not for you, then switching back to your old OS is as simple as swapping out the card. I recommend at least a 16GB name brand card. I'm going to be using a 64GB SanDisk, which is a bit overkill for what we'll be playing on MinUI, but I have quite a few of these lying around so I'm going to go ahead and make use of one. The developer of MinUI is Sean Inman, and as always, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. If not, I do apologize. But the necessary files can be downloaded from the GitHub page, and I'll put a link in the description below. And as you can see, it's still in pre-release or beta, but during the time I've been using it, I haven't run into any major issues and it's been very stable. Under Assets, go ahead and download both the base zip file as well as the extra zip file. And while we're in our browser, there's a few other programs we're going to want to grab if you don't have them already. The first is SD Card Formatter, which we'll use to format our SD card. Then we'll also need Win32 Disk Imager to write the firmware image to our card. And lastly, we'll need Disk Genius to make some partition changes to the card. Now these are programs I like to use, but feel free to use any alternatives that you might prefer. Go ahead and open the MinUI base zip file. And I recommend taking a look at the README file as well and reading through it in its entirety, just so you're familiar with the installation process. There's some things covered in these instructions that I'm not going to be going over. Uh, such as using a two SD card setup. So again, it's good to look this over uh, just in case there's some features that you want to make use of that I don't cover. The instructions inform us that MinUI is meant to be installed over the stock 35XX firmware, and the developer is kind enough to provide a link to that base firmware that can be installed to our SD card. So to get a copy of it, we'll grab this link here, then paste it into our web browser, and here on this page, under Assets, we want to download the tf1.image.zip. So now let's extract this tf1 image onto our desktop. And we want to write this image to our SD card now. Since I'm using a card that I've used before, I'm going to go ahead and reformat it using SD card formatter. But if you're using a new card, you should be able to skip this step. Now with a freshly formatted card, I'm going to open Win32 Disk Imager, click this folder icon, and point to the location of the TF1 image file. 
Now here under device, be sure to verify that you are in fact writing to the correct drive letter of your SD card. I shared this before, but more than once I have clicked the wrong drive and wiped out the contents of a backup hard drive. So needless to say, that really ruins your day. Try not to do it. If all looks good, you can click write and then click yes. After the writing of the card is finished, we can close Win32 Disk Imager and then open Disk Genius. Locate your SD card and then select this ROMS partition. As you can see, we're not using the full available space on our SD card. So with this ROMS partition selected, click Delete and then Yes. Now we want to select this area here that represents the free space on our SD card and click New Partition. Make sure the file system type is FAT32 and give it the volume label of ROMS. Then click OK, then click Save All, Yes and Yes, and we now have a ROMS partition that takes up the entire space of our SD card. We're now ready to move over the MinUI system files. So again, open the MinUI base zip file. Also, open the MISC partition on your SD card. We want to copy this single dmenu.bin file into the root of this MISC or miscellaneous partition. Now, navigate to the ROMS partition of the SD card and copy the BIOS, ROMS, saves, and this MinUI zip over to the SD card. We can close the base zip folder and we now want to open the extras folder. This will give us access to a few additional consoles and emulators. And there's also a short readme file in here as well that I recommend you look over. We want to grab all of these folders and copy them to the ROMS partition on the SD card. Now we're getting pretty close to being done. One thing that the developer recommends for MinUI is adding BIOS files. Some emulators require them to be present and then others will perform better with the BIOS files on your card. Now the README in both the base and the extras zip folder show the recommended BIOS files and where they should go on your SD card. Now I can't tell you where to find these particular files, but I can tell you that Google is your friend in this regard. Once you have the recommended BIOS files, you can put them in the corresponding system subfolders of the BIOS folder on the ROMS partition. The last thing we need to do is add our ROM files to the SD card. So the folders are clearly named in the ROMS folder, so you shouldn't have any trouble identifying in which folder you should put your ROMS. One issue I did run into was playing ROMs that were zipped in the 7Z or 7-zip format. MinUI refused to load games that were zipped in this way, so what I had to do was unzip them once I moved them onto my SD card. This actually wasn't too bad because you can select all of the 7Z files at once and then right click and in the 7-zip menu click extract here and this will extract them all. Now once they are extracted, I went ahead and deleted the 7-zip files to avoid duplication on the card. Now interestingly, I only needed to do this with ROMs that were compressed in the 7Z format. It wasn't necessary for ROMs that were in the standard .zip format. After we've moved our games over, we can now eject the card and plug it back into our 35XX. When powered on, you'll see that MinUI is installing. And before long, we're actually in MinUI, and you can see just how simple and clean the interface is. The brightness can be adjusted by holding down the menu button and using the volume keys. And let's open a game now, and I'll quickly go over a few of some of the nice 
features and settings of MinUI. So when you press the menu button while in a game, you get this really nice front end menu with really useful options. You have your save state system easily identified. And then there's further options in here where we can really dial in and change things like the aspect ratio to fit our preference. There's an option for CPU speed if you want to underclock or overclock for better performance. We can go down here to shortcuts and even define custom hotkeys for either each game or each system which uh, is really cool. So even though a MinUI is clean and simple there's still a number of tweaks under the hood that uh, you can play around with to fit your style of play. One setting I would definitely recommend keeping an eye on is this prevent tearing option. It's set to lenient by default and with this I notice some frame choppiness on games where the screen scrolls really quickly like Sonic the Hedgehog. When I changed it over to strict, the game ran much better. So be sure to keep an eye on this option if you're noticing some frame rate issues. That's going to wrap it up for now. Happy gaming, my friends.